started. Um, so first order of business is we will do Pledge of Allegiance. Feel free to join us. Thank you. Um, so we do have meeting minutes from both our June and July meeting. I believe we missed uh, uh, approving Junes. Um, does anyone on the commission have any comments on minutes from the past couple of months? All good. I'll make a motion to approve. Do, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. Next is the consent agenda. So we have two addresses uh, on the consent agenda. One is uh, 9 Ivy Lane. The other is 90 Wooten Road. Uh, James, you want to give us a quick overview of those two? Yeah, Matt and I looked over them. No trees removed. Uh, tree protection is good, so everything looked good. All right, sounds good. Any other comments? I'll make a motion to approve. Do have a second? All in favor? Aye. All right. Now we get to the main event and why everyone is here. So new grading permits. Um, do we have anyone from 515 Oak Grove Lane with us tonight? No one? Okay. We'll uh, loop back around if they do show up. Next address, 221 Spring Mill Road, patio deck project. Great. So if you could come up, just introduce yourself. Uh, relation to the project and give us a quick rundown. That would be fantastic. Um, I'm Bevan Mortian with Roots. I'm one of the landscape architects that worked on this project. Um, so uh, Michael Gladnick is the other landscape architect that worked on this. He couldn't be with, there with us tonight. Uh, we're going to be doing the construction on this project. Uh, it's mostly grading. Um, all the water's come down from the neighbor's property, which you can see from the grade lines coming straight down. It's basically hitting their property, and they're asking us to regrade, in a nutshell, the swale so the water will actually divert away from the house and down to the creek at the base. Um, as it says on the uh, minutes, we're, we're moving about 80 cubic yards of soil. Um, and we're putting in a pan at the top so the water spreads evenly throughout. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. We are installing a patio here. Sorry, um, the deck is actually existing. I know that says it on the packet, but um, the actual deck is existing. Great, thank you. And from our perspective, um, if you could speak to any of the dirt that's being moved near the existing trees and any tree protection that's required. So as you can see, we have tree protection around all existing trees. Um, none are being removed. Uh, I believe we have a six foot uh, berth on all the trees from the trunk out. Uh, it's standard six foot tall, you know, fencing around staked every uh, couple of feet on center. Um, generally, we are not going to be changing any grade around any of the existing trees because, uh, as you can tell, besides the one in the middle, the majority of the trees are actually at grade. Um, they're at the perimeter of the, of the property. Um, closest one that we're going to be grading is actually a red maple that's going to be closest to the road. Uh, but even that is not going to be affected more than a couple, you know, I would say an inch or two. So. Questions from commission? Yeah, um, James, is there a reason why this wasn't approved via the consent agenda, or? Yeah, the only um, problem or um, wasn't a problem, but there was a tree on the uh, the bottom there. It might have been the neighbor's tree, like looked like a large maple from Google. I didn't see it on the plan because it's probably on the neighbor's yard. This one right here, or oh, this one over here. Yeah. Um, it's actually, I believe, a large sugar maple. Yeah, I think I was the just, one you're talking about. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Uh, it's about four feet off the fence line. It is the okay, neighbors. So if you were digging for, you're putting drainage down there. So we're putting, we're actually putting a um, a, a bubbler from the driveway here, but we are going to be regrading that so it actually goes out this way. Yeah. So I was just the only reason was to 
you go into the roots of that tree, it looks like a possibly a heritage tree. So and that's on the neighbor side, right? That's on the neighbor side. Yeah, yeah. just to protect the tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. As you see, we we do have um, we do have our silk sock going all the way around the perimeter at the base. So right here and here. So we all will be protecting it at that point. So there shouldn't be any runoff or anything of that nature. But we'll put in some tree protection as well. Good. Or yeah, just if you hit any roots, cut them back, clean them up. Yeah. Sounds good. Great. Anyone else? All right, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Good luck. Thank with you the for your time. Okay. Uh, anyone from 824 Luden Lane pool projects? Nada? All right, we'll loop back around if they show up. Uh, 235 Stratford Ave. Good evening. Um, Michael Boker, civil engineer with Apex Design and Engineering Group. Um, here for the property, we prepared the plans. Uh, the intent is it's a tear down build up with a new house. Uh, what, during construction and demolition of the existing house, uh, the intent would be to keep the existing driveway in place. There is a large oak in the front yard that we want to retain and, and protect as much as we can that is here. Uh, we do need stormwater management for the proposed development, try to keep that out. It doesn't come out past where the limits of the existing driveway are today. And minimal grading, uh, we do provide for tree protection fencing uh, for the trees around the perimeter of the developed area. Great, thank you. Um, any questions from the commissioner? Yeah, the reason why this isn't on the consent was because of the oak tree, um, and you're leaving the driveway in. During construction, construction we'll leave yeah. that in, yes. And then just, you know, obviously be careful when it's coming out, but Steve working with you? Yes, he is. So, I'm sure it'll be good. He's the one that asked us to leave the driveway. Good. Perfect. That was the only reason it was up here. Great. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Great notification. Um, all right, 208 Comrie Drive, a deck and a porch, one tree to be removed, 26 cubic yards of dirt. Good evening. So just state your name, address, um, and details of the project. Yeah, hi. My name is Patrick Duffy, one of the owners of 208, 208 Comrie. Um, it's a rehab project there that my business partner and myself are working on. There's two decks that will be built off of the back of the home, and I believe that's what we're discussing. I'm sorry I don't have the plans. My, my partner has them in his possession, and he's not with us right now. Yeah, no problem. Mainly the, the concerns tonight would be the one tree that's coming out, um, the DBH of that tree, as long as it's under 30 inches, um, we should be okay. And then also um, tree protection, which I'm looking at the plans right now and it does look like that is specified. Um, do you know the DBH of the tree that is coming out? I do not, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just looking at the plans now to see if I can figure that out. Do you know if it's a relatively large tree or a small tree, like even if you? So I purchased the property and the previous owner had already started some work and I don't know if this tree has already been torn down or not. The, uh, they already did the demo prior to me buying the, the property. Um, so is the tree has been removed at this point? I, I honestly couldn't, couldn't tell you right now. Okay. I'm wondering, what is the trigger to um, the have dirt. to reduce? Oh, it's the cubic yards of dirt removed? Uh, it's only 26. Because if, if it's only one, the reason to come here would be if the one tree is a heritage tree. Okay. Right now, it's 36 inches and larger. Right. I, I see a bunch of trees. Yeah, yeah. Is it 30? Okay. Um, so I do see a majority of the trees um, marked on the plans, but 
in order for us to move forward with this, because it is a 30 inch tree and larger, there are compensatory trees required if the tree is a healthy tree that was removed. Um, so if it was removed already, what we would need uh, is a report from an arborist um, and your tree company that had done the removal. Yeah, I didn't re remove any trees. Like I said, the, okay. the project was kind of. Okay, so uh, what what would we, we would need from you um, is to put together um, on the plans the exact tree that was uh, was or is planned to be removed. Okay. Um, and uh, if it is a hazardous tree, uh, then what you would have to do is put together a hazard tree report and can reach out to the township in regards to logistics of that. If it is or was a healthy tree, then we require six compensatory trees to be planted and we would need plans showing what trees you're planning on planting, a tree table, um, because some of them do need to be some large canopy trees that you plant with. Um, so those would be the, the things that we would need for you to put together and then come back uh, with us next month and then we can take a look at those. Okay, if, okay. I, if the tree is in fact still there, then none of this has to be done, is that right? No, it, it still has to be done um, okay. if it still needs to be removed. It's okay, just, I, mean, I could maybe change the design of the deck to, to not take the... Yeah, I mean that The would deck's be, not built, nothing's there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would always be advantageous, you know, from our perspective is to keep as many large trees as possible, especially the heritage trees. Right. I mean, um, there's quite a few trees in the backyard there. Sure. Okay. Um, so just take a, another look at the plans. Sure. Um, if you can keep it and maneuver the deck around, then um, you wouldn't have to come back before us again because of the amount of dirt being moved around doesn't trigger us. But if it does have to be removed, then... Uh, you'd have to come back before us. So okay. um, just keep that in mind. Reach out to the township if you have any further questions. Sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, next address, 328 West Warrior Place Indoor Sport Court. Sorry if I butchered that name. Um, so uh, just introduce yourself, relation to the project. It's like we have 31 trees to be removed, 640 cubic yards of dirt to remain on site. Yes, um, Chris Doherty, we are working with the civil engineer shock group on this project. Um, with me is uh, landscape architect Joe and uh, homeowner uh, Larry. All right, so uh, as you said, 31 trees are to be removed. Let me get to that plan. All right, uh, so on this plan, we do show all 31 trees to be removed. Uh, they are located around the house and um, ar around what is going to be a proposed building addition. Um, all these trees to be removed have been listed on this plan down at the bottom right corner, um, size and species. Um, we also, all, just a, a note, these plans were all planted uh, at the time of construction of this house, which was 1999, so they're, they're not any uh, old trees. Um, all right, moving on to our uh, ENS plan. Uh, our our uh, tree protection is shown in blue. Uh, we have a route going around uh, the existing building, so we provided tree protection for any of those trees out there. Um, we're going to demo a, an existing pool and then construct this new building addition. Um, all the trees, as you can see on the other one, were all about where this limited disturbance is, and uh, so we put them to be removed. And then um, we've also provided tree protection around the whole backside of the lot where there's quite a bit of trees, as you can see. Um, and we did go out there and have our survey guys locate every one of those trees and sizes so they're all accurate um, if you zoom in on the plan. And then down here is our proposed stormwater management system. Thank you for that rundown. Out yep. of the 31 trees, are they all healthy? Uh, they are, yes. Okay. Um, I'm just taking a quick at the tree table um, while I'm doing that. Does anyone else uh, on the commission have any questions? I think you do a tree 
So the true replacement is on page two at the bottom. Um, uh, Joe can speak more to the proposed trees if you'd like to, to see where those are going. Uh, but there's 31 to be removed. And since they're all under uh, 18 inches total, it's just one for one replacement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you could come up and speak to the replacements, that would be great. Good evening. Um, so our uh, current landscape plan is in a, uh, a schematic uh, form at this point. Not all species have been selected yet, but um, I did do a quick count before I came here to this evening, and we're well over 80 new trees coming in. Um, when you look at the very substantial screen buffering that we're proposing uh, for around uh, this side of the um, proposed structure, and then also we're looking at additional screening up the entire um, backside of the property as well, along with um, redoing a lot of the plantings above the existing boulder wall. So um, we have a quite a substantial amount of planting scheduled. Um, knowing you don't have the specific species defined, but is there a mix of large shade trees in that? Or are you thinking smaller trees? No, there's going to be a mix of large evergreen trees along with um, uh, Shade trees, I, I'm um, sure we're going to be using many native uh, maples and oaks. Um, it's going to be a, a mixed planting for uh, multi-seasonal interest. So okay. there'll be uh, plenty of diversity. Great. Yeah, biodiversity and as many shade trees that you can fit in there um, would be advantageous. Um, the tree protection fencing um, looks fine to me. Um, I, I do not have any further questions. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, thank you for planting more trees than required. That's much appreciated. <laughs> Almost, uh, well, more than double. <coughs> so good work. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the plans. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Best of luck. Thanks. Okay. Um, 601 County Line Road, the Inn at Villanova renovations. Good evening. Um, so 750 cubic yards of dirt to be taken off site and one tree to be removed. Hello, Brendan Dorley, civil engineer working for uh, AEC, uh, representing Villanova. Um, the, the purpose of the project is uh, the Inn at Villanova at County Line and Matson Ford. This is the, the inn and um, their cafeteria, except they also have a carriage house on the property. And the, this project is to renovate the carriage house and the site immediately around it. And as part of those renovations with uh, impervious, um, we need stormwater management. So we are doing some uh, detention basin in this area of the property. This is the plan that was submitted to for the grading permit. However, this basin now shifts up a little bit into this area. And this red dot is the tree that we're removing right next to the guard house here. And it's a 36 inch tulip. Okay, and that's a healthy tree. I believe so. Uh, we didn't have Villanova assess it, but by my estimation, I think it's a healthy tree. Okay. So we are proposing uh, the six compensatory trees, four large canopy and two additional. Um, the, those are shown. on this plan. Now, th this plan had two trees in this location. However, the underground basin is shifting here. So we're going to propose these trees circle the parking lot on this end. Do you have the species of trees going in uh, picked out yet, or is that TBD? Uh, we're proposing uh, some maples and some cherries. OK. But I. Don't know if Villanova would so choose to modify that list based on their interest, and because I know they have uh, facilities that might choose different selections. But we're at least 
we will at least steer them into the, the large canopy and, and um, so. Great, thank you. Yeah, because um, that's what's important, at least four of them would have to be large canopies. Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. But six yeah. would be great. Maples okay. and cherries sound good, but um, yeah, whatever they end up deciding, I'm sure will be good. Okay. And then I'm sorry, maybe I missed it. Why are we taking out the 36 inch uh, tulip? Because we're grading in that area. And even though this plant has the detention basin in this area, mm -hmm. I had to shift it back so the detention basin is really right next. It, it's really where the tree is now. Th this is the plan that was submitted for the grading permit. Mm -hmm. But based on uh, engineers' comments, I had to shift it away from that area. And there isn't, you can't shift it in a different direction so as not to shift it right over that tree? I, I cannot. Why is that? Because it's collecting the impervious and the roof system of the carriage house. So all of the stormwater it's collecting is right in this area. And we're collecting it and we're inf infiltrating it at that spot before we discharge it to the system, which is back in that area. And it isn't possible to collect it in a, in a different area around that carriage house? Like is there This whole thing is parking yeah. and there are utilities crisscrossing it mm -hmm. between the inn and the carriage house. So we really are shoehorned with um, other site constraints. Mm -hmm. well, it does look like a, a nice feature tree where it is now. I'm yeah. sure um, Villanova is going to be remiss having it there, down. There is, uh, I think this is, might be a 42. Mm -hmm. Th this is a large, these two are very large trees and there are other moderate sized trees in here. On this plan, the orange that I highlighted is the tree protection fence that we're proposing around the existing trees. Okay. Um, it sounds like you've done what you could um, yeah. to try and maneuver the system. Mm. So we appreciate that. Um, any other questions? How much ground is below your the stormwater system? Is there like a couple acres down there? Oh, on the on the property. Yeah, where you're putting your are all uh, it's like a 30 tree. acre site, but there's a ponds there. It's so it's it's really limited with steep slope. So so really the development area is right here. However, there's still constraints that limit our location right. between the, the structure. The only reason is because you have to put in the system, right? There? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And it, it's preferred to keep the system where the runoff is coming from, so that right. way it, it's recharging that area. Uh, yeah. Any other comments? Um, hate to see this tree come out, but um, everything does check out. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve. Do you have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Thanks and uh, best of luck. Thanks. Appreciate it. James, was there a reason why that wasn't under the consent agenda? Was it because it was a heritage tree? Um, no. Flip your mic on, James. Whenever it's a institution or large group we just I don't even look at it okay. I just DMAC decided to put it to the committee okay. just in case neighbors had any uh, wanted discussion mm -hmm. all right um, looping back around um, to see if there's anyone here uh, for um, 515 Oak Grove evening sir um, so if you could Looks like we have zero trees, zero dirt being moved. Um, so just state your name, relation to the project, what the project is, and um, we'll go from there. Um, my name is Thomas Sonny. I'm the, the owner of the uh, property. I'm actually still waiting for the builder with the plans so he can present. Okay. We can put you at the end. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. If you don't mind, yeah. Just yeah, we can do that. Do you know how long it will be before he's here? Uh, he should be here at 7. Okay. Be more than a few minutes. Perfect. Sounds Excellent. good. We'll loop back around. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and then I lost track. The second one was, I believe, 221 Spring Mill Road. 
over here. Not a name. Maybe it was Strafford. Loudon Lane. Thank you. Anyone from 824 Loudon Lane here? All right. We're going to have to catch this next meeting. Okay. Um, so trees removed without approval and clearing permits. We have 506 Shalmont. Um, do we have anyone from that address here this evening? Yeah. Evening, gentlemen. Um, so we did receive uh, some communication around, um, so there were uh, 16 trees removed uh, previously. Um, and then there's also another batch of trees to be removed. Um, the letter I have from Brandywine Designs um, states that the owner is agreeing to pay a fee in lieu of for those 16. Um, but what we'd really like to hear from uh, you guys is really the condition of the trees um, make sure in the future that we do have the proper uh, documentation and process in place uh, before any trees are removed. Um, so if you could just speak to a little bit about the projects, what your involvement was, and then we can go from there. Yeah, so my name is Mark Wagner. I'm with Brady Wine Designs. I'm the landscape designer. Um, I got brought in two months ago, so kind of in the middle of this whole process. Um, to basically design the replacement. The homeowner's desire is to basically remove almost all the trees on the property. We've identified a few that we'd like to save and replant it with new trees and you know something a little bit more sustainable than what's there, so. Okay. Um, John, I know you were presented a lot of information. You were, um, communicating back and forth. Uh, do you want to cover off on any um, anything from your perspective? No, I mean, we were going back and forth. I know they presented the new revised plan. However, um, there was no mention of the previously removed unauthorized trees. I did speak with Mark last Thursday and Friday um, and asked for a submission of the list of trees that was to be uh, compensated for and I believe that has been completed. Got it, yeah. Um, even though the owner would like to do a fee in lieu of, what we really need to have on record is some sort of documentation per John's mention of these were the, the trees that were removed. You clearly have the, the DBH of the trees, um, but just a, uh, a plan that states all of this um, along with uh, a report to show this uh, in regards to documentation yeah on the second revision okay you got the revision here so on this revision here the highlighted trees highlighted yellow are the ones that were removed without authorization okay sure um, but what we really need is uh, some sort of photographic evidence um, or some sort of uh, you know report showing more specifics than, than what these show in the plans that we received. Uh, um, unfortunately, I was brought in, like I said, after the fact of the trees being removed, so. Understood. Um, I, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure that photographic evidence of this exists, so. I, I believe the owner's reps here, correct? Carolina? You wanna come up and talk a little bit? I mean, you know a little bit more about this. I know these two gentlemen here are we're set to the wolves in a later fashion, so maybe you want to talk a little bit Me about too. it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolina, I'm the owner's representative. Uh, Mr. Aliba uh, was not aware that he was supposed to get a permit to remove the trees. Um, and uh, somebody from the township showed up as he was doing it. Uh, at that point, he stopped. And um, when I went in there, I did an initial survey. I'm not a landscape architect, I'm an, just an architect. Um, so I did a survey of what was there at the time when I went there. And it had been maybe a week after they st the, the township showed up to the property. Uh, and that's where this plan comes from, from the stumps that I saw at that point. Have the stumps since been ground down or they still remain? Uh, they have been grinded down. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, so John, knowing the, that. So just just to make mention, sure. the applicant was shut down twice. So they removed trees, shut down, advised to what our schedule is, and then started to remove trees again, and were shut down again. So, you know, the homeowner. I mean, I know it's not three people standing here knew there was an ordinance in place at that point, um, and I requested at that time. Actually, I spoke with them on the phone when Ricky was on site and asked for photographs of the logs. Um, and all that good stuff and why the trees had to come down and unfortunately none of that stuff was provided so um, I mean they have comps for the trees um, I, I think we do need a landscape plan showing where these trees are going um, if they are if they're not going to pay the fee in lieu of but that's up to you guys you want to see a, a mix of some trees planted on site half fee in lieu of that's totally up to you guys sure um, Outside of the, the fee in lieu of trees, I mean, would the, the owner be willing to plant uh, compensatory trees outside of what is already yes, being planned? We do have a planting. Sir, we do have a, we do have a planting plan. But those are for the, tree, the, the next batch of trees to be removed, correct? Yes, yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to address with the new planting plan and with you guys here is that it's a two acre property and the compensatory trees are, it's 122 replacement trees, 29 of which are large canopies. So to try to fit all those trees on a two acre property that has an 8,000 square foot house on it, plus driveway, et cetera, it's not sustainable, not a sustainable landscape in the long run. Um, so I tried to, with the new plan, tried to balance that as best I could. You know, we got a couple two oaks. We're keeping the big cat sura that's out front. You know, trying to plant. We're replacing the white pines with blue atlas cedars in the back. Something that might do a little bit better over the long run. Not such tight spacing as they are now. Um, what the homeowner would be willing. I mean, this is I think about as much as we can put on the property as. And what is that outcome? What is the proposed plan? How many trees is that? And how many are large canopies? It is uh, 85 trees and 19 large, ca large canopy trees or large evergreens. So it's a mix of large canopy and large evergreen, like the Blue Atlas Cedar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, for purposes for this evening would be just clearing up the uh, tree removal without approval. The plans for the new work would be necessary for another meeting of ours. Okay. Um, so I think the action would be to clear up the trees removed without authorization. Um, it sounds like there's really not much more room uh, to plant compensatory for um, what was removed. Um, given that, so 12 were six to 18 inches, three were 19 to 29, and then one was a 30 inch um, ash. Um, the issue is, you know, ashes normally uh, would be bypassed for our compensatory and, mm -hmm. um, you know, overall count, but because they were removed and we have no evidence of what they were, then uh, we can't, you know, necessarily subtract that from the count. There is another ash on the property in the front that is in rough shape. So, I mean, if we want to make the leap, we could say that one's clearly got borer. So the one in the backyard probably had borer. Sure. But yeah, so I, I understand where you guys are coming yeah, from so as well. So for any, if you want to classify a hazard tree, a hazard tree for the new plans, what we would new, need is a hazard tree report mm. um, that would include, you know, the details of the species and photos, all that good stuff. Um, so. In relation to clearing up the uh, trees removed without authorization, um, knowing that there really isn't any more wiggle room on the property to plant, um, I am okay with accepting fee in lieu of, uh, but would love to hear the thoughts of the rest of you guys. I'm okay with the fee in lieu of, but I would proposed the township to assign a fine because it was actually stopped twice 
So I think that's a, a red flag on the field. And then I would just be curious as to your planting plan, what you're planning and how that um, affects the neighbors next to you. Sorry? I'm curious as to the planting plan, maybe that's the next meeting and how that affects the neighbors adjacent to this property. Like meaning what was there, were there a lot of large canopy trees and what you're proposing to put in, does it basically put the property back to where it was at least regarding how it would affect the neighbors or is it a totally different change for the neighbors? That well, as far as like treating the property damage, like yeah. along the right side of the property, there was a bunch of trees and stuff that were like dead. Dead. Could you s speak into the mic? Thank yeah. you. <laughs> It, uh, like as regards to screening the neighbors' properties, along the right side, there's a bunch of Leland cypresses that are just they're done, they're Leland's. Um, so I'm proposing to replace them with cryptomeria. Mm -hmm. um, along the back, there's the white pines that are just way too close, and they're pretty much. I mean, they're in okay shape, but you know, they're what, 10, 12 feet apart, maybe. Yeah, 10 foot center, 10 foot center white pines. Um, you know, planting some blue atlas cedars maybe on 30 foot centers would probably be better in the long, long term for the property. Um, as to as far as what was along the left side of the driveway, I don't really know what was there. Um, so I can't speak to that. And we don't have currently anything going in there along that left side, like right across from where the garage is. Mm -hmm. um, Judging from the disturbance, I would say it wasn't anything huge. I think this plan has DBHs on there. So some sevens and fifteens. I don't know what they were. Got but it. um but yeah, I mean we're just trying to um you know, keep the screening intact. That is one of uh the homeowner's goals. Sure. So Okay. Um has there been contact with the neighbors, do you know, regarding what the planting plans are, the removals? No. Okay. Not as I'm aware. Carolina, do you know if he's talked to his neighbors at all about, no? Okay. So. Um, it might be worth, you know, someone reaching out um, just as notification to the project. Uh, I'd imagine, you know, someone nearby probably called uh, previously with the trees coming out, so helping to avoid that again. Um, any other comments regarding the fee in lieu of? Uh, just a couple questions, uh, part of that too, but how many trees were removed already, do you know? The 16. That's it? As far as I know, that's what I was told. So, so this list on this paper? Yeah, the fee of the, yeah. And one of them was a 30 inch ash tree. Yeah, triple lead ash, yeah. I, the stump, I think the stump's still there for that one. At least it was the last time I was there, the stump was still there. And then your, that was both times you were, they were stopped? No. So there's more than that. So do, does anybody know how many was removed then? No, there was probably about I'm guesstimating, uh, let's say 20 the first time I showed out. There was uh, a line of evergreens around the side that separated their house from the neighbors, and then it went into the backyard. Um, there was probably another 10 or so back there. The second time I came out, everything that was behind the house was basically cut down. So that was probably another 20 there. And that's when I spoke with the homeowner. He was on site. I put him on the phone. He spoke with John. and. Yeah, it was it was at least forty trees between the two occurrences. Okay, and then are you guys removing more? Is that your plan? That is the the plan is a almost fresh slated except except for there's a southern mag in the back corner, a beautiful weeping beach in the back, uh, a Jane magnolia, and then a big cat sir in the front yard. Everything that, else. I'm is, sorry, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like. You, very hard for me to read. Um, yeah, so if you... It how many are being removed on the next... <sighs> well, <laughs> so my count is number of removals, 93. So 93 additional. That's what is, yeah. Plus the, plus the 15 that are on that list. So 93 plus 15. And the 15 you're talking about is this Yes, list. or 16, yeah. But the township says 40-ish. Yeah, I know. You, I understand. <laughs> I'm just trying to... Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I get know. it. 
I don't. I know. As I'm much trying as to understand you know, too. This has been going on since August, so I'm yeah. trying to help mm -hmm. everybody get this cleared up. All right. So there are about 40. They say seven, 16 or 15. And then, how many did you say are on that list? 93. 93 more to be earned. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and yeah. to confirm, this address had come before us once before about a year ago. Is that correct, uh, Leah, Ricky? Sorry. Did this address come before us a while ago, about a year ago? Sure. Yeah. It was August meeting, I think. Okay. Yeah. I was told it was here before, and the Shade Tree Commission denied their request to remove, I think it was 27 trees at that point. Yeah, I did. I actually researched this before the meeting. I apologize. It's all coming back to me. Yes, we did We did deny uh, the plans requesting to come back for further clarification of, of the plans themselves. So it sounds like we have a slew of trees that have been removed that were unauthorized. Um, this 16 wouldn't cover it. Um, so what I think the best course of action is, you know, work's been stopped, right? Um, and before any other work happens, what we need to see is a report of all the trees that have been removed to date, species, DBH, everything um, that you can come up with pictures wise and everything else. Um, and then at that point we can reassess um, I know you have a planting plan, so obviously those compensatories will be factored into this, but then how does that factor into the 16 that were removed at one point in the past? But at this point, you have a slew of trees that have been removed without authorization. Um, so, so let's just hypothetically say that the information that we're trying to, f to gather doesn't exist because, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think I would recommend that. Let me, let me jump in for one second. So the, the plant list that you provided yes. last Thursday covers those trees all on the left-hand side. That was the first one. Yes. Okay. What I said when I was on the phone with your client was, it's very easy to produce a list. You have a proposal from your tree care company, okay? That has to be floating around somewhere in space. Give that proposal, it's going to line item what he's paying for, whether it's remove 30 trees or by species, by size, by risk, whatever priority. So that list is somewhere out there. If you can get that to me, I will help your client because he's been going on for a stinking year now. And it's really, it's becoming a pain in my ass. Sure. Okay, I'm tired of hearing about this project. These people are tired of hearing about it. He knows we have an ordinance. So I need that list in full and I'm, I'm here to help him yeah. do that so that we can present something clean and precise so we're not wasting these volunteers' time. Okay. All right. Well, I will see what we can come up with. Yeah, I agree with that. What if we can't find those yet? So what I would do is you can tell me if you already found the others. Sometimes we go on before. John, put your mic on. Mr. Dunn is very competent. He can go on GE and try to at least try to pull up um, something out of his pocket on what was there. Or what I would need to do is do sampling at a neighboring property, and I'd be happy to meet both uh, Mark and Mr. Dunn over there at the same time. And, I mean, the, the tree company that was hired to do the removals, they should have this on file somewhere. <clears throat> um, as yeah. far as the tree company that was hired to do the removals, I think some of them might have been the employees of the homeowner in some capacity, so. No, I believe it was Executive Tree. Oh, was there an actual tree I, I believe Executive okay. Tree was there at some point. Okay. okay. How was the tree uh, replacement table derived? According where, to where your guys' comp compensatory replacements? No, but where did the trees to be removed, the 107 trees? I think you have 93, but with these additional 16, it'd be 107. Where, how did you get that number? Just basically doing a site survey and then okay. counting also checking against the plan that Carolina provided me. Okay. So. Okay. 
So we're saying that we want to get the proposal that Executive Tree did and match that up to what is here to see if it matches the 107. Um, just, just for the record, it, it wasn't Executive. Um, I don't know the names. The owner, he knows who he hired. I don't even know if they had a name on the truck, but I don't want to use someone else's name if that wasn't who was there, so I don't want to say it was Executive. But the owner, Mr. Tony, knows exactly who he hired. The two times, I don't think there was even any name on the truck when I had stopped out. Okay. Thanks, Ricky. Okay, um, so to move this forward, um, provide any sort of documentation, trees removed to date. Once we have that cleared up, then clean slate to what the plans are moving forward, future removals, plantings, everything else. And as John mentions, you know, we wanna get this wrapped up just as fast as you guys want to, mm -hmm. uh, but we need to make sure we do it the right way as well. Um, but just remember, you've already comped for the trees on the left, so you're good there. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. It's the back. That was, I guess, the second time or whatever. Right. Yeah, I mean, I saw a bunch of piles of stuff grinding. Be in lieu of? We need to show a plan or some sort of count of what those species were in the back. Mm -hmm. Right, but what I'm, what I'm saying tonight, I don't know that we're necessarily approving the fee in lieu of tonight, only because we want to see as a commission a holistic plan. the full list, yeah. trees mm -hmm. removed to date, figure out how all of that incorporates into the future plantings, and then go from there. Okay, we will do our best to provide that. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Mike, just call me and we can meet on site if we have to, look at GE and all that good stuff. One moment while we mm -hmm. wrap this up. We'll just take, we'll take a five minute break um, and then resume. Thank you. I will wiggle in some public comment um, while we have some time. Sarah Pilling, 29 Garrett Avenue with two questions. So this wonderful thing I've done, this is in Garrett Hill, and my concern is about two very tall, very dead ash trees on two properties. So this is Garrett Avenue. This is Lancaster Pike. This is Radnor House's land. This is the Mary Converse House. This is Converse Drive. This is Converse Drive, and this is the carriage house. 
which is now a commercial building. There is a driveway, which is where the horses went down to the barns in the early 1900s. So this height below ground level gets deeper and deeper and deeper. There's about seven feet beyond the driveway, which goes downhill, and a 10-foot chain link fence. I have no idea who put in the chain link fence. My house is here, number 29. This is a buffer. My house is 29, and this chain link fence goes all the way down. At 33 Garrett, which is a rental, and I think at 39, cause, but I can't go into their backyard, are two very dead, very tall ash trees. I had one. Steve Schreiner, for a great deal of money, took it out. But you can't take it out onto the property. They have to use a crane because they've got a fence between the tree and it's at the rear of the properties. I'm not even aware that the property owners understand what's going on. But they're beginning to break up. So my question is, are these hazardous trees, are they solely the property of the homeowners? And I don't mean to intrude, but as a horticulturalist and knowing what's going to happen to these trees, I'm very concerned about them. So I came with a question. Do I just ignore it and let them fall on a house? Do I tell you guys? Does Ricky get involved? What's the deal? So uh, per a recent uh, ordinance update specific to this exact issue, so any trees that pose a public safety issue, so if the tree is close enough to the street, behind. And, and this is, so they're right just inside. Okay, yep. So, so even they, if it's they on go this way, they fall on this right. now a commercial building. So even if it's a tree on private property, if it can fall in the distance of a street, a bus stop, a sidewalk, what have you, certainly call the township. Um, Ricky will come out, take a look, uh, get in touch with the homeowner, right. um, and then you know recommend removal, possibly. Um, if the tree is on township property within the right of way, then now that's yeah. the township's responsibility. Which it's not. But it doesn't seem like it is, right? So that would be the recommendation. Okay, well, I will speak to Ricky about it. They're brand new neighbors. I don't think they have a clue of what this looming, they're taller than this room. I mean, they're very, very large. It took Schreiner bringing a crane a half a day to get these down and actually there was no way they could even get the stump down. I'm left with a, about a four foot stump mm -hmm. and that's fine. So that's one question. The second question is are you aware of what's going on with 26 Wentworth? I did. Uh, that the township mm -hmm. wants to buy it. There are three very mature jap maples, very large for a jap maple. And if they're gonna put in 17 parking spaces, they're gonna come out. So I wondered what the process is about that. There's a meeting of the community mm -hmm. next Monday, and then it comes to, for a final decision mm -hmm. on the 12th of September. So the township is required uh, to go through the same process as residents are for compensatory trees. So at some point, providing that the deal goes through and everything happens, um, the township you know, will have to have the same plans drawn up that show removals, replacements. If there's not enough room to plant replacements in that area, which possibly could be the case, then um, same sort of process, you know, fee in lieu of likely we would plant trees and parks or something. Right. Well, they're going to have to put in a buffer because next door to it sure. is a residential, and this actually is a residential property, mm -hmm. R5. So there should be, except that all these houses were built before zoning came in, 
so I suspect they're all non-conforming. Mm -hmm. I know R5 because it's w my house is R5, but it's non-conforming. It should be five, 10 feet on either side. Mm -hmm. right. So when my house got reassessed, if whatever happened, the new house could be nine feet wide because my house has three and a half feet on one side and five on the other because it was built in 1920 and zoning didn't come in until 1968. So there's very little of Garrett Hill that is conforming. But I just wondered because it would be a shame to get rid of these trees. It would be. Um, yeah, I mean, from what I saw, it's a very flat lot, so there shouldn't be much grading required. No, so they'll have to do stormwater management. Sure, stormwater, um, you know, will certainly be a proponent of keeping any of those if possible. But right. um, thank you, Sarah. Okay, I just wanted it. to know about that. <laughs> thank Sarah, you. you would remember um, this, a parking lot came before the board or the planning commission about a year or two. Well, ago. that was when Tony D. Felice was going to. Yeah, he wanted to make a driveway out there, right? Well, and he so he was going to redo what was Garrett Hill Pizza yeah. into a restaurant and put a parking lot there. Then it came to Greg Lingo, who's Rockwell, was going to build two houses there. Right, they were here last year. Right, yeah. and that was all set. They went to caucus, and it was fine. Within a three-week period, things flipped, uh, yeah, yeah. and the township is buying it to make a 17-site parking lot. And don't ask me what I think. Huh. What, didn't neighbors oppose that? That's what's happening this coming Monday oh, okay. so on site. Which So it would still be a parking lot, but it would be a township parking lot Tony T. D. Felice doesn't have to put it in or maintain it. The township will. Okay, so I just, those were the two questions I had. And I feel for these neighbors who are new, mm -hmm. uh, one of whom, one of the houses was sold, but it's a rental, still a rental, and the other one is a family she teaches at Eastern, and I think they do not have a clue of what an ash tree is and why there's this gigantic tree in their backyard mm -hmm. that does not have a leaf on it. Mm -hmm. And the bark is beginning to fall off. And the yeah. branches, I mean, it's getting brittle. It's been dead for a while. Then. It really is. Well, I had mine taken out pre-COVID, so I would guess four years ago I paid mm -hmm. Steve Schreiner to remove it. Um, so these have been dying within the last four years. One had a few leaves one year, one has been leafless for two or three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we'll call you up in one minute. Just wanna make sure we have full attention. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the can I minor you divergence um, and your patience. Um, Seth, yes. I'm sorry, could I jump in for one sure. second? Sure, so yes, go ahead. Button up this last situation. Um, what we're asking is to, to put a finale on what we just uh, dealt with, me and John. If they would submit everything so that we can find out what happened and we would review it and get everything squared away with that so next month they would be able to come back and present their plans going forward, but we'd be able to sign off on what was removed and kind of see from there if you guys are okay with that. Yeah, I like that plan. I'd rather just knock it out all in one meeting, so forensically plus moving forward, and then we'll all be square. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so 9 Ivy Lane. Go ahead and come up. Oh, I'm sorry, 515 Oak Grove, sorry. It's only an hour in and already losing it. <laughs> I think um, 
I think this will be quick. Thank you. So just uh, <laughs> so we have zero trees to be removed and a thousand uh, cubic yards of dirt. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not it. So zero trees to be removed and zero cubic yards of dirt to be removed. So why did this end up on the agenda, uh, Leah, with no dirt, no trees? We're wondering the same thing. Okay. <laughs> so this should be pretty quick. <laughs> All right, um, if you could just uh, state your name, yes. uh, property address, and then just a quick overview of the project, and then we'll get this squared away. Okay, uh, my name is David Simergin, David Simergin Builders. Um, I'm the contractor uh, submitting permits and gonna be constructing an addition at 515 Oak Grove Lane in Wayne. Um, we're uh, building a, a small addition on the back of the house. Uh, which doesn't encroach on any trees. Um, there are, in our uh, submitted plans, uh, two trees that will have the um, uh, required uh, chain link and orange fencing around them, as well as the uh, silt fencing that's spelled out in the engineering plan. Um, so there, are, there is no uh, soils being removed from the property and there are no trees being removed. Um, so with the addition, is that what it is, an addition? It's a small okay. addition, yeah. Uh, there is dirt being moved around, correct? It, the um, topography, it, it's, it's just a, it's a crawl space, okay. uh, and it's a slab on grade. There's part of it is a covered porch, Got it. which doesn't have, um, which doesn't have a, any basement or crawl space under it. And then there's another uh, small, um, extension that has a crawl space under. Got it. And the uh, stormwater management recharge bed looks like it's nowhere it's near. It's pretty, no, it's nowhere near trees. any trees. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do see the um, tree protection. Looks like there's actually uh, three groupings that'll have three, yeah. tree protection around four total trees. Um, and any uh, expected large equipment or anything to be impacting any of those trees that are nearby the construction? Uh, this, this will be done with a small um, mini excavator. Okay. Uh, so there's, there's no, there's no uh, loaders or dozers coming in. It's just a track, a small okay. mini track hoe excavator. Great, okay. Any other questions? All right, I'll make a motion to approve. Do you have a second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Great, thank, thank you. Thank you, have a nice evening. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> yeah, all right. We'll consider that. Okay. So that takes us to item seven, violation notices. So none um, sent out other than kind of what we just spoke to. Um, and next, new business. So fall planting. Uh, we're in full swing of planning which is fantastic. So I had sent around a deck um, that is also attached to the uh, agenda packet. Um, so essentially in recap, um, the plan is uh, to do 150 trees this fall. Um, and all of those trees would of course be bare root, large shade trees um, from BHF. Uh, the plan itself, um, we need to get DOC approval on uh, for two reasons. One is um, the amount for the trees itself is over 10,000. It's 13,800. Um, and then also just uh, out of due diligence, um, you know, making sure uh, we have all communication and transparency around our plans for the fall. Um, and also, uh, this would be uh, exceeding our budgeted big tree planting amount for the year. However, as we discussed earlier, we are willing to tap into our uh, STC balance. Um, so our balance as of the end of July was 43,451.55. Uh, the total thus far for the fall planting 
19,817. That may increase a bit with taxes and some other things, but right around 20,000. Um, and then that would leave us with a balance of around 23,000. Obviously there's some pending funds coming in from fee in lieu of um, some other means. So um, we'll still have our uh, safety balance, if you will, of around 23,000. Um, so what's been approved thus far has been the tools um, from Do It Best Hardware. That was 1,017. Um, the 50 plantings that are going to be done by Tree Authority, LLC, for 5,000. So that was approved by Bill White. Um, and then the last approval that we're seeking is for the 150 trees for a total of 13,800. Um, so the plan would be uh, 100 of these trees would be residential right of way uh, street tree plantings. Um, 50 of those would be planted by the tree authority. The other 50 would be planted by public works and John and Rockwell have uh, graciously um, uh, agreed to donate some of their time to help plant. Um, the remaining 50 uh, would be trees planted in parks and also uh, possibly some trees carved out for the WBA. Uh, I have been in touch with uh, Reed Taylor from the WBA and looks like there might be some trees that we can sneak in um, here or there. Um, Any order of magnitude on how many to the WBA? So I had uh, committed up to 20 trees to the WBA if they can find spots. Um, if, if that's even a possibility, we don't know yet, but um, news to come. Yeah, depending on where they are or would be going, might be difficult to use volunteers. So that's just a little yeah, um, pink flag. Not yeah, those flag. would not be done by volunteers. Um, we would carve those off separately. Um, and then it's worth noting that there are um, trees that are in the WBA that are going to be replaced at some point soon. Uh, Ricky, you want to comment on those quickly? Yeah, me and John were just um, talking about the timeline for doing that, so we still have to, to work the details out of when we're going to get those done. Um, I know the Fall Festival is coming up in September 18th, I think it is, so it would be nice to have them done, but we have to make sure that we can get the uh, company lined up to be able to replace those, because that won't be done in-house by township staff. We're going to go with a, a company yeah. um, who basically planned them, or at least someone will give us an appraisal price for it. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for that update. Um, so quick order of timeline of how things um, need to shake out for a successful planting. So Frank submitted the request for 150 trees on August 15th. That was mainly just to get our uh, batch in place. Obviously, we're still seeking approvals, um, but hopefully everything uh, works out in that regard. The next, um, so tonight, what we need to do is just approve the overall plan, the amount of trees, who's, who's planting trees, um, and the timeline of events um, from this commission. And then uh, the plan would be uh, after Labor Day, so September 6th, that Tuesday, um, the planting and volunteer registration opens, um, and we would send a uh, email to those that uh, are essentially on our waiting list from the spring. Um, there's only a handful. Uh, Frank had sent that over to me. Um, so to give them a head start uh, for registration, it is first come, first serve. Um, the idea would be uh, same like we did with the um, spring, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the summer giveaway is we'll convert over to uh, using Google Forms um, and collect registrants that way. Um, I do have um, the start to uh, our radnertrees.com domain, how we were using that to kind of forward over to our certain registration um, areas. I've created a little landing page that has a spot for um, signing up for uh, the fall planting giveaway 
and then also uh, volunteer registration. Um, I'll be sending that out once I have that finalized. Um, Leah and Ricky did get me the township volunteer um, form, um, essentially, you know, generic volunteer um, form. Um, so we'll need to get that signed by any volunteers that want to sign up. Um, and then September 9th, so that Friday, um, we'll target either that Friday or thereabouts to have uh, Molly send out a communication via social um, to uh, have people register for the fall planting. Um, I still need to put together that um, graphic that will go out, but TBD. Um, and then the Monday, September 26th, um, BOC meeting um, would be where we present the plan to the BOC for approval. Um, and that would essentially be the monetary amount, the dates, the times, all that good stuff. Um, and then um, we do have our uh, upcoming STC meetings. So September 28th, October 26th, so we have two more meetings to finalize details, cover off on any approvals that may be needed, but we should be pretty locked and loaded by that point. And then come Thursday, November 17th is when trees um, would be ready for pickup down in the Navy Yard. Um, and then the goal would be that Saturday, November 19th, to plant trees and parks, obviously weather permitting. Um, so we'll work out, you know, all of those details and logistics um, along the way. And then um, between November 21st, so that Monday, knowing that Thanksgiving is that week, giving us, you know, a, a couple of weeks. I know that we need to get, the advisement is to get the trees in the ground within 10 days. Um, so we're kind of right up against that. But between November 21st and December 2nd, so that next Friday, would be getting all the, the trees um, in the ground from a resident perspective. Um, so that's really the, the overview of the plan. Um, any questions on the specifics, logistics, any thoughts? I love the um, Google Forms. I think that sounds great. And I think it's great that we'll have all trees in by the beginning of December, which is on target or earlier than some other years when we've done during more so like the Christmas holidays. So I, I think that's good. So thanks, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the good thing about the PHS offer is uh, we have to follow by their timeline, which is a awesome. rec <laughs> recommended timeline, and it helps us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any um, other questions, Ricky? I, I had oh, one uh, comment. Um, Bare root trees are different than container trees in terms of how you plant them. Uh, I was going to uh, suggest that we have training for the, um, I forget the name of the vendor that's going to plant the first 50, Tree Authority, on how to plant a, a bare root tree and offer that training to your guys also. So Frank, uh, uh, Ricky. sorry I didn't respond back to your email. You just reminded me. So Tree Authority is, all of their staff has gone through bare root training and was one of um, the reasons why Dana recommended them. So they're all set. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And uh, also to the township staff, we had training for them and we actually, Gretchen actually reached out and we have uh, some more training for a couple individuals who will be assisting with the tree planting that we have. So she's been <laughs> kind of right on that with making sure we stay up to date with our uh, bare root tree planting and training. Great, all good news all around. And I do believe uh, the next PHS bare root um, training is. I just had it. I think it's. Um, I think it is next month. Um, for those of us that we want to run through that training, I'll see if I can find those details and send it out. Okay. Uh, any other comments, Ricky? Yeah, could I ask one thing? Uh, could you give me the, the breakdown for the for the 150? I know the township is going to have um, 50 tree authorities for 50, and then the 50 is getting 
uh, for the residents, for them to, to plant for themselves? They're, they're picking up. No, uh, so the, the remaining 50 would be planted by volunteers in parks, similar to what we did in the spring. Okay. So what we would need to do is obviously still coordinate with um, you know, parks and identify spots, all that good stuff. Um, and then out of that 50, we did offer up to 20 um, to the WBA, um, knowing that these aren't uh, B&B trees and they wouldn't necessarily, the, the bare root trees wouldn't necessarily be planted in the prime locations. But if there's any spots in the WBA that might be off the beaten path or something, to look for opportunities to drop some of these trees. Um, but that's still TBD, um, but in contact with Reed about this. Okay. Um, with, go ahead, Frank. I'm sorry. Um, my question, I mean, I know I'll work over with, with John in regards to the parks that we want to um, plant for the township. Um, I guess my question, when you were breaking down that, that 50 for the parks, you said some would be divvied up for not just parks? So if the WBA can accept trees, it would be subtracted from that 50. So let's say they could accept all 20, then it would just be 30 that would go to parks. Okay. All right. So once we get that number, then we'll know. Okay. Right. And those 20 that would be planted in the WBA would not be planted by volunteers. We would have to figure that out separately. And I'm not volunteering Public Works to do that. <laughs> we'll find somebody else. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you. I'll just. Mm -hmm. I know um, James and his brother did um, offer to plant, uh, not for free, but as a resource if we need him. So um, hold tight if you speak to him. Um, we might have a WBA job for him, but stay tuned. Has James gone through the planting training yet? That's what I like to know. Yeah. Twice, I heard. And Seth, we also have um, John who said he's able to, to volunteer um, his staff. So that'll help out the, the town. Yes, greatly. thank you so much, John. Much appreciated. Um, if, if you guys, after you discuss, need additional support, we do have James's brother uh, that we could loop in to help out with a few, but just keep us posted. So just, just to add, uh, it's usually one volunteer per tree. So I've put out a feeler to DeVita, um, Schreiner, um, Cabrini College uh, to see if they had uh, any appetite to provide volunteers on November 19th. Um, Steve got back to me immediately. Thank you, John, for his address. Uh, so we do have volunteers available from uh, Steve Schreiner's organization. Yeah, that's great. It sounds like we won't have any shortage of volunteers. No, we may have too many. So. <laughs> Um, and the goal would be, you know, the, the parks that we identify, um, some of the feedback that we received in the spring was, um, you know, why don't we have some of the nearby residents, you know, be more involved. Um, I think that was really just a lack of communication on, on our part. We had our volunteers, you know, we were off to the races. So this time around, we'll make sure, um, you know, when we do uh, send out any call for volunteers, you know, we can make sure we identify the parks um, that we're planning on, on planting in, making sure that that's very clear. And then also, uh, you know, we could maybe round up uh, some of our ward uh, commissioners to send out um, communications specific to parks and their wards and, um, you know, round up volunteers that way too. Um, great. Any other comments, questions? All right, um, so we'll just do a formalized approval of the plan um, from our commission's perspective, just so it's on the record. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve the fall planting plan um, as documented in the deck that was sent around and in the agenda. So a second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, let's plant some trees. Okay. Um, next, old business, so uh, the emergency tree removal ordinance update so that uh, finally got through the BOC and approved unanimously. 
uh, on uh, last Monday, uh, the 15th. So that's done. Uh, the next one was the personnel of commission. Um, so that is planned to be, uh, I believe, on the next um, BOC agenda. Yeah, we had an update today from um, Bill and, and Tammy and John Rice saying that they're going to introduce it on September uh, 12th to the to the uh, to BOC. But then after that, it has to be advertised um, before they can move forward with it. So then it'll have to go back in front of them probably in the October uh, meeting, and then they'll be able to move forward with um, staffing that. Got it. Sounds good. And then once that gets approved, then we can solicit for uh, that missing seat. Mm -hmm. on this board and see if we can fill it. So in the meantime, if you know anyone, let them know there's a seat opening up soon. All right, uh, the comprehensive update, so that's still in the works. Uh, just took a little bit of a backseat with everything going on, so stay tuned um, on that. But I think um, there are definitely a couple of priority updates in that uh, comprehensive update that we definitely want to see uh, focused on first, especially with, um, you know, this Chalmont property is a good example of um, some of the proposed updates helping to reinforce um, our mission. So um, stay tuned. Uh, tree ma maintenance proposal. Uh, so in the deck, you probably saw a slide that said uh, to come. So I have um, a bunch of slides built out in that proposal almost in a uh, finalized spot uh, for Ricky for you to take a look at. John, I'd like you to take a look at it um, to hopefully get that you know snuck into all of the um, budget season planning. Um, that would cover off on things such as um, you know all of the uh, batches of trees that the township has removed. Um, uh, all of the uh, work that the Public Works Department does in regards to all of these trees that we're planting, you know, they graciously go around and take care of them. Um, and, you know, at the, up until this point, that's kind of been the, you know, unbudgeted ad hoc thing. Um, so making sure we clearly identify the level of effort and everything that needs to be done and that has been done and quantify that um, into a formalized number. So that is um, very close. Uh, shade tree communication plan. So that, uh, the master flyer was sent out July 7th. Uh, we do still plan to do, um, you know, bits and pieces of that communication um, here and there. Um, so uh, nothing planned just yet, but um, that is the plan. All right, any other uh, comments or any other old business that anyone wants to cover off on? Good. Okay, number nine, hazardous trees. Um, so it looks like uh, there was a 72-inch silver maple and then a 32-inch white pine. Ricky or John, do you guys have any comments on those guys? 72 inch maple was totally decayed. It wasn't really 72 inches. It had a bunch of leaders coming off of it. Um, really bad shape. And the pine tree was storm damaged. It was poor condition. Okay. Sounds good. And those made the list because they were both uh, heritage trees. Correct. Sounds good. And I'm looking at the report, and those pictures definitely indicate some uh, bad looking trees. All right. Thanks, John. Uh, trees removed by Radnor Township. Um, Ricky, do you want to provide the latest on the work that's being done throughout the township? Yeah, um, just before I get to the, to the tree contract, um, we actually had trees removed, but by the time we, we had it, they, they didn't make it on here, so there'll be some more for the next meeting um, for emergency ones. Yeah, so. Sounds good. So <laughs> Yeah, we'll have them on the, on the next meeting. But we did have some emergencies that came up, so they'll get thrown on it for the next meeting. Um, in regards to the contract, everything is, is moving um, smooth. We did have some change orders. So currently they're back up on the uh, bike trail. I had to go walk it with uh, John. There were a bunch of ash trees from the time we initially went out. 
that are being added on. So we have probably about 20 that are up there now currently working. Um, then we had a couple other areas, uh, Friends of Radnor Trail. There were about four trees there um, that were added on. Uh, we still have some trees left to remove at West Wayne Cemetery. I think it's about six there. So they're, they're uh, moving at a good speed, um, but we do have a couple more locations to get done. Um, I think Harris Lane has uh, some ashtrays. They'll be working there, but um, they're making good progress, and they should be done, hopefully, um, within the next three or four weeks. Great. Thank you for that update, Ricky. All right. Uh, public participation? None? 